Welcome to the RV Podcast, episode 391. And this week, a scandal that we've uncovered uh, as we've shopped for a truck to haul our new fifth wheeler. We're talking about overpriced pickup trucks used to haul RVs. Welcome, fellow travelers. It's time for another episode of the RV Podcast. Answering your questions, sharing tips, suggesting great trips and off-the-beaten-path adventures, and always staying on top of the RV lifestyle news you need to know about with great interviews and inside industry information. Here's your hosts, award-winning journalists Mike and Jennifer Wendland. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer Hello, Michael. Hello, hello. And this week we are going to talk about a scandal that we have uh, experienced firsthand as we've been shopping for a pickup truck to tow the fifth wheel that we're about to get. And this has to do with overpriced uh, pickup trucks, uh, price gouging, many say outright profiteering at the expense of, uh, of people who are in need of a truck uh, for their RV lifestyle uh, because trucks are in short supply. Dealers are jacking up prices way above MSRP. The industry, the manufacturers, they're not happy about it, but the dealers are doing as they please, making money while they can. We're going to talk about that coming up the other uh, the other section of uh, the podcast right after we uh, we cover a few items here including the fact that well as we come to you this time from uh, cloudy Florida today <laughs> it's a cloudy day yeah, no sun today um, but we've been down here in Florida uh, pretty much since January and it's time to head north and uh, it's still cold up there in the upper Midwest in the 40s it certainly is warmer here than up there yes in the 40s for crying out loud but spring is coming and maybe we'll bring the nice weather up down here you know the trees have been budded out for a long time there's pollen in the air in fact so uh, but we'll have to take some spring time uh, with us out there and as soon as we get there it's time to turn around because we've got a very aggressive uh, travel schedule and lots of activities coming and we'll be hitting the road once we hit the road to get to back to Michigan we'll tell you lots of lots of fun stuff coming up uh, but uh, the big news for us this week was a labor of love that came to fruition, and this is the publication of our latest ebook, our seven day adventure guide for our viewers to a place near and dear to our hearts. The Natchez Trace. A 444 mile route that runs from Natchez, Mississippi to Nashville, Tennessee. Awesome. It's filled with history and beauty and great scenic uh, uh, opportunities. But I think for us, it is the ultimate RV road trip. The best part about this 444 miles is no billboards, no commercial trucks. You feel very comfortable taking your time and just enjoying. Low speed limits, like 50 miles an hour, straight shot. Uh, excellent road and so much to see and do. We have put together, we, we do this just about every year, this stretch of, uh, of roadway that runs, uh, you know, from the north to the south. We've done it from the south to the north. So we thought uh, we'd put together this book showing the places that we have personally checked out, that we have visited. We tell you where to eat dinner, where to camp, uh, what stops on the, the mileposts along the trace, where you should stop, which ones you can skip and uh, how to get a seven day adventure out of this. You can do it quicker. You can take longer if you like, which we'd really recommend. Enjoy it, it's an awesome place. And some of these towns along the trace are so much fun. It is fun, so everything's laid out for you. You don't have to think, you can just read and go and enjoy. And um, it's uh, available right now. now. This is an ebook, it's not a printed book. You could print it out if you want, but it's an ebook. And uh, immediate download, $7. That's what uh, we charge, uh, one for each day, $7 for our seven-day adventure guide to the Natchez Trace. And uh, we'll put the link uh, in the description below. It's just uh, rvlifestyle.com slash Natchez Trace, all one word, rvlifestyle.com slash Natchez Trace. Uh, we hope it's you enjoy it. It's a whole bunch of good suggestions and yeah. how to enjoy this. Yep, it is. Uh, we've got some feedback that we want to share, and I think some of it's uh, pretty educational. And uh, let's let's kind of uh, treat that. The first one is uh, from somebody named Marion, and Marion uh, 
uh, missed our live stream on Ask Us Anything, but she uh, sent us along a really interesting uh, comment about her experience in getting a new RV. We've talked about this a lot and uh, why it's important to have a new RV inspected, uh, even a new one, and Marion brings that point home. She sums it up very clearly for you. And she said, I wanted you to please inform your viewers and followers about how important it is to get a reputable RV inspector, inspector before you take ownership of a new or a used RV. We ordered a new Tiffin Wayfarer nine months ago and were informed that it had arrived at our dealership. I had an inspector we had found go to the dealership and take a look at our RV. Our salesman was not very happy about our choice of inspectors. He is really picky. <laughs> but in the end... That's what the salesman the said sales about the inspector. inspector really, but in the end, we did the right thing. Our report was 180 pages long. <laughs> no wonder the salesman didn't like it. A 180 page inspection report. But... He, he found a non-working generator, a hole in the side, and a beat up outside AC unit among many other things. Get an inspector. Contact your Mercedes dealer. Our inspector also found a recall from Mercedes for the rollover mechanism. It will take our dealership about two weeks to get our RV into a sellable unit. And then the time it takes Mercedes to deal with the recall. A Tiffin. I just can't believe they would let any RV with their name on it off to a dealer with all the troubles that ours had. This is why folks we say get somebody to inspect it because uh, once you take possession getting it back to the dealer getting on their schedule is a nightmare. Uh, no dealers don't want you to bring an inspector in because they're gonna find stuff that they should have found the dealer in the first place. And uh, Marion thank you for sharing that you said it much better than our suggestions can ever do. That's your experience with a very name brand, a brand known for quality. So um, uh, 180 pages, that does sound a bit... Uh, yeah, and I wonder how Marion found this person. Well, there's a, the RV Inspectors Association, and you can Google it as well. Okay, and, well, uh, that's good to I'm know. I'm sure she found it from them. Uh, they're becoming, I think, an essential, especially in these days uh, when we keep hearing so many things about sort of slipshod manufacturing. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, I don't know what the reason was for your unit like that, but aren't you glad, as you say, that you had an inspector? Here's a note from Ed Richards, a friend uh, that we know well. And Mike, what's Ed got to say? Ed says, uh, in support of your comments regarding vehicle speed, we talked about that really last week about... Uh, uh, we commented, I think, on how fast we noticed everybody traveling these days, mm -hmm. how it used to be 70 was the speed limit and people would go 80. Well, now it's like the slow speed is 80 and we find more people going to 90 and even 100 miles an hour. It's ridiculous. We mentioned how driving slower will save you fuel. Uh, and in these times of unprecedented fuel prices, Anything that saves you fuel is good. Well, Ed did an experiment. He said this. He said, a couple of weeks ago, I went camping down at Bayou Signetti State Park near New Orleans, uh, just across the Mississippi River from New Orleans. Uh, back in January, I did a couple of gas exchange, uh, gas mileage posts with my 2012 Road Trek 210 Popular. It's a camper van, uh, which is built on the Chevrolet Express 3500 van chassis with a six liter engine. And the results of that test, 16.3 miles per gallon if I went 70 miles an hour. If I backed off to 65, uh, I got 16.6 miles per gallon. Well, I wanted to try it again. And when I left for New Orleans the other day heading home, I decided to see what she would do if I dropped that speed to 60. I rolled onto I-10 North, uh, bound in the right lane, accelerated to 60, set the cruise control, cleared the MPG calculator, and I never had to disengage the cruise or accelerate or decelerate until I exited I-10. At 60 miles an hour, my average mileage was 19 miles per gallon. Uh, not bad for a 9,600 pound vehicle. Well, I think your experiment demonstrates that uh, lower speeds means more 
fuel economy. Uh, so I think uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, test. Uh, other people, I'm sure, have done it. I tell you, going 60 miles per hour, you got past a lot. <laughs> yeah, you sure did get past a lot. Did they honk at you? <laughs> did you get any obscene gestures? Nevertheless, you saved uh, a lot more gas mileage. All right, one more, and this has to do with something we all talk about, and that is uh, preparing meals for the road. And, uh, and this one came from Dave LaRue. And he said, you can tell when it's getting close to trip time in our house, when the smell of cinnamon waffles are being made. We package them up and freeze them, then just pop them in the toaster when we want them. Next up, Sloppy Joes, meatballs, and we're going to try some lasagna this trip. The freezer is packed when they take off. That is the way to go. Prepare your meals ahead of time. But it's neat this day. He toasts those waffles and he puts them in freezer bags and then you just warm them up. Yep. And you've got nice warm breakfast. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Dave for that tip and uh, for uh, making me a little hungry. And meatballs. I love a meatball sandwich. Yeah. Put oh. some mozzarella cheese on it and a bun and some sauce. I think that's really good. Not that just... Uh, and spaghetti noodles. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> All right, while I uh, get my wits about me, uh, we'll take a quick break and then we'll be back. We're going to talk about the price of pickup trucks. Stay with us. Are you tired of overcrowded campgrounds, competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be for you. Jennifer and I recently bought some property just west of Nashville from a great company in Tennessee that specializes in large acreage RV property. They're called Tennessee Land and Lakes. You can check them out at myrvland.com. The scenery and the setting is breathtaking and you own it outright. It's not a timeshare. Your property, your way. You can garden, landscape, bring your pets, your friends. It's big acreage in a private setting. There's high-speed fiber optic internet connection along with utilities. A wonderful place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations. And it's ready whenever you want to be there. Prices for big acreage start at only $79,900. Plus, you get us as your neighbors. There's financing available and some really friendly staff to work with. Visit MyRVLand.com. That is MyRVLand.com. You'll be glad you did. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battle-borne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. All right, welcome back everybody. And now we're going to talk about a scandal that we've kind of experienced firsthand as we have shopped for a heavy-duty pickup truck uh, to tow the fifth wheel we'll be getting. Um, I actually thought that would be the easiest part of getting a new RV, but it is not. Uh, I have been looking for how long? A couple months now, and you have been diligent. You have That's all you've done is obsess about getting a truck. <laughs> you had no idea it would be this hard. Well, and we do understand that there is a, a national shortage in trucks. Uh, before we came down to Florida in January, as we passed what used to be the Palace of Auburn Hills, uh, that parking lot where the Pistons used to play is now this huge parking lot filled with trucks waiting to be completed looking for that chip. The chips are not available, you know this, and all these trucks are waiting 
just waiting. It reminded me of being in Elkhart and going past the different manufacturers and seeing all these different RVs yes. sitting there, ready to go, but missing a part, a, you know, an some awning, part. Or some part that they needed. And they can't get, they can't sell them until they get those parts. Well, that part shortage, of course, is affecting the automobile. Understand? We understand that. Uh, to order a new truck, it now takes um, maybe four months if you're lucky six months is more an average there are some trucks that are available and that is what i have been looking for i've been looking primarily for new trucks because i wanted all that new technology and we want to keep this truck for a long time um but they're not available uh what we instead found uh, is widespread uh the norm actually over uh charging over msrp Manufacturers suggested retail by auto dealers that sell these trucks. Now, I'm not talking about a $500 fee or anything like that. We're talking thousands of dollars overcharged. It is uh, so bad that both GM and Ford have reportedly sent letters out to their dealers saying, you guys, you're destroying our brand reputation. Cut that out. You keep uh, ripping off people like that. That's, in effect, what it is uh, in the perception of many. You keep doing that. You're destroying our band, brand reputation. And we are going to pull, pull your allotments. Because each dealer gets so many uh, trucks and cars. We're going to give them to somebody else that isn't doing that. Well, the dealers are still doing it. And we found this true, be it a Dodge Ram, which I looked for, GMC Sierras, uh, Ford uh, F-250s and above. Uh, G, uh, Chevrolet Silverados, just wildly overpriced. Let me tell you how bad it was. Uh, the Ford dealer here in Fort Walton Beach uh, had a, a 2022 Lariat on their lot available for sale in from inventory. And that's kind of what I needed because we're getting this RV very quickly. Um, so I needed it right away. The MSRP was $80,000. Now, before this uh, sh parts shortage, you know, you never would pay MSRP. Never. You'd always pay X. You'd get under that. The dealers would, would give you great deals. So I expected, okay, I'm going to have to pay MSRP. Th that's not what I had. They added what they called a diesel surcharge. What the heck is that? They made up that term. $22,000. That is a lot of money. I mean, we had heard what five thousand dollars. Five thousand was. We well, heard that many of them did five thousand. I still wouldn't pay that. No. But uh, and I was angry, and I told everyone uh, I refuse on principle to, uh, to to pay that. Well, somebody else will, and they will. And I'm they sure, will. but uh, not me. But twenty-two thousand dollars. I went back. I talked to three different salesmen at that dealership in Fort Walton Beach, and they all held firm to that. Um, that $22,000 diesel surcharge. Now, we heard that charge at other dealers around the country. Uh, some called it a market adjustment. Uh, some said it was a demand price increase. Uh, but what it is, is pure profiteering from these dealers. Personally, and I know many of you who've heard us kind of hint at this have, have, have written an agreement, I think it is scandalous I think uh, I complained to Ford Motor Company. I gave them the name and all that stuff. And they didn't really seem to care when I told them that, despite the letter that they had sent to dealers about overcharging above MSRP. Um, but I will remember that and never do business with those companies. I found it appalling. Now, there's another side to the story, and you kind of, uh, you, you kind of see their side, and, and I do too. I do understand that it's tough times for, for dealers you too. You know, if you're not getting trucks, if you can't get them, we talked to one person who's opening a new dealership, and what was he supposed to get, like 40 He was supposed to get trucks? 40 and he had none. They, they couldn't give him any. They just didn't have any to give him, and he and, was a new dealership. And Ford, uh, just in the last week or two, I've had two dealers tell me they've completely closed all new orders for the rest of this year because they can't meet the demand they have. So you're telling me if we go back and if that truck was still there, it might be thirty thousand over. <laughs> that dealer, I will, I will never. I don't even want to drive by that dealership. Oh, you know, I understand that the cost of owning a dealership—you've got to pay oh, your yeah. lights and you've got to. I don't. 
I'm, I'm sure pay your people something. And you want to I keep know these they make people commissions. Yep. And if they don't have anything to sell, how can they make a commission? So I understand that money needs to be made if you're going to pay your bills. It just, I know it's just how crazy our times are It is, are it right is a now. crazy time, and, and I, do, I do understand that. And I do understand maybe even charging a few thousand dollars over. Not that I'm going to do it, but... I don't think I'd be raising the stink on it. You know, I all the people I see, particularly down here in Florida, who are workmen, who their truck is their office. It's, uh, it's their toolbox, and they've got everything they own, and they need a truck so that they can do their jobs. You know, I don't want to say it's just that dealer that was charging 22000 That was the, the biggest uh, arbitrary hike over MSRP. I mean... 5,000 was typical. I found several that were 10,000. I found a couple that were 15,000. And on each case, I told them that, look, I'll buy, I'll pay MSRP, but I will not go above. And they said, nope, we, we really don't care. And they didn't. So. <laughs> so the question everybody has for us now, though, is did we get a pickup truck? And the answer is, we think so. <laughs> <laughs> we think so. It, it even gets more complicated than that. We found a used truck that we were going to buy. In fact, we gave a down payment. We were buying that truck, and circumstances oh, happened. Oh, I don't even. Uh, that uh, someone that else was, got the truck. I'm not quite sure how that happened. We bought it at 11 a.m. and at 1 p.m. and they sold it to somebody else, even though my offer had been an earlier. It wasn't an offer. It was a deposit I made. Anyway, it's good I lost that because that was a gas version. And um, it, it only had like 14,000 miles. 8,000. Yeah, no, it had... Uh, did yeah, it have 14? It had 14. I thought it was 8. No, that was... Okay. A, it only had 14,000 miles. Um, and that would have been great, but uh, we really need a diesel, we've decided after all, uh, for the, the towing power. And uh, it turned out I, I, from the same dealer, I found a better truck, had a few more miles on it. It's a 2021. I think it's got 24,000 miles, something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it costs a little bit more because it's diesel, but uh, one of the things about diesel is diesel is about 30% more fuel efficient than the gas engine on a truck, so maybe that'll help a little bit there. But uh, So we do have a truck, uh, fingers crossed, I talked to him just before we recorded, oh yeah, it's all set. Uh, we pick that up in actually Louisville, Kentucky next week. And I what hope. is so funny <laughs> is on our way home from Florida to Michigan, I wanted to stop by and look at this truck. I'm not letting her because she might find something she doesn't like about it, and then I'm then I'm stuck because everything else is back time to that picking up the RV, uh, all the stories that we have lined, all the appointments we have. Because so. I am Mrs. Picky. Yes, she's very picky. So yeah, as long as nobody smoked it. So uh, yeah, that was the big thing. If anybody smoked in it, we're, it's a it's a we won't do it. So we, we may have to, if we can, stop by and let you see But can you believe that? Tape. He won't let me stop and look at it. We're, when we go to Michigan and we drive our car that we're turning in. I know in. her. She will not be happy with something in it. And then and then two months worth of work is out the window. <laughs> <laughs> because everything is dependent on me getting that truck next week. But uh, if the wife's not happy, nobody's happy. So... <laughs> But, so I, I have my fingers crossed, and that's why. But I can, you can see what he has to deal with me, the picky one. I have to deal with. He won't let me see it because he's buying it. He doesn't care. So um, while I do think twenty-two thousand is a bit excessive, I do, like you, understand the predicament that the dealers have. They have employees and their families. They want to keep them working. They're not selling as many trucks. Uh, and I do understand what this means for, you know, the automobile manufacturers. I mean, Ford and General Motors have warned their investors that the chip shortage may reduce their earnings this year by a billion dollars. That's, that's, that's a big hit across the whole industry. But finding a heavy-duty truck, it's a challenge. Uh, if you can order one and wait for six, eight, twelve months, you can probably do so. Uh, and they may even waive that uh, over MSRP sign. But if it's something you need from inventory or in stock, you're going to have a heck of a time finding a dealer that doesn't charge over it. There are some. We found a few. But none of them had a truck in stock. That, <laughs> They'd that sold all work. theirs. They'd sold them all. I guess that's why they got. They sold them. Uh, all right. We'd love to hear your opinion and uh, what you think. And we'll share our adventures. Uh, now, once I get the truck, if she lets me, after we see it, <laughs> Uh, then we've got to get the hitch for it. I've been lining up that all day. I mean, it all is like cascading. So if the truck deal falls through, 
we're going to seriously need some counseling here. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be... I am looking upon this truck as maybe a good investment. We buy this truck the way things are going. Yeah, we think we could probably it sell might it over. Double in value in a couple of years. Oh my gosh, the used truck prices are, are what MSRP was, you know, three years ago. So uh, I'm sure that I know this truck that we were buying uh, is selling for more now than it did when it was bought in 2021. So it's insane. So it's kind of we're kind of going the way of Cuba. Yeah, we're gonna all have <laughs> these ancient trucks out there that we'll be pulling our RVs with. Oh boy! So it's a crazy world, you guys. But um, but if we want to travel in our RV, uh, some people can afford to sit it all out. But we figure uh, we don't know how much time we got. And we're gonna take advantage of it as much as we can. Our job is to spend our children's inheritance. Oh, Michael, that's not a popular thing to say. <laughs> Well, it it is. That's my job. Oh, we threaten our kids when they, when they, uh, we just want to mess with them a little bit. We say, you know, we're going to give all of our money to the dog park. Uh, for, you know, okay, for people Bo. that don't know, our children gave us Bo as a surprise birthday present. Yep. So that's our joke. So we the, say, yep. our, our money's all going yep, to dog park. Our parks. money's going to all go to the dog park. But uh, all right, uh, thank you guys for listening to that. But send us your opinion. We'd love to hear from you. What you all think, uh, Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com mike and jen at rvlifestyle.com and congratulations to those dealers around the country that are not taking advantage of this with exorbitant increases over msrp when we come back your rv questions of the week stay with us when we're on a road trip we always seem to find a way to stop at a camping world center there are over 225 camping world locations across the country and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World. And as we talk about it, as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount. If you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10, when you buy $99 or more in merchandise, you'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Welcome back. And now it's time for us to answer your questions. And our first question is from John. He just bought a new RV. Should I obtain insurance through State Farm, where I have all my other coverage? Or should I obtain insurance through American Adventure Insurance, who the uh, salesman is recommending. Apparently, the salesman says it's better than regular auto insurance for RVs. I think he is also getting a kickback from the yeah. insurance company. You think? <laughs> How do I know what's the best extended warranty insurance? You mentioned exclusionary. Um, so he's got two questions. The first is uh, uh, the, the basic uh, coverage uh, of the vehicle itself. And he wonders if he should use his the person who does his auto uh, coverage. Because, as you know, normally it's cheaper if you get your house insurance, your car, car's insurance, all from the same place. So, so it's logical to think. So uh, I would certainly get a price from mm -hmm. your State Farm agent. Uh, I would uh, get the price from, uh, and I don't know that uh, company, American Adventure Insurance, I don't know them. I would get a price on their insurance as well. And I would get another price from someone else. Uh, there's so many different uh, RV insurance companies out there. Uh, you, there's no short answer. You need to really kind of do your homework on this. But uh, you nailed it. That's the problem when a dealer recommends extended warranties or a dealer recommends uh, insurance. Uh, it makes it very easy for you, you know, to say, okay, let's just go with them. And that's part of your signing when you sign all those papers. But understand that a chunk of that goes back to give that uh, a little incentive to the dealer uh, and the salesperson there for suggesting it to you. So uh, I suspect you will find a better rate and uh, probably pretty comparable coverage, but uh, I don't know that brand. I, you know, every, I'm not an insurance expert, but I do know that like everything, it pays to get several uh, quotes and, uh, and, and good luck to that. Now, as to the question about extended warranties, uh, we're, we're, we generally believe in extended warranties and the best way to find out what's best for you is to get to shop it around 
and have somebody actually shop it for you and come back with several different offers. Uh, I would never take uh, an offer from just a dealership on that. I would always shop it. We recommend wholesale warranties. We have been uh, uh, kind of a, an affiliate of theirs for uh, years now and uh, many people have thanked us and how easy they are to work for. If you just, they're listed on our partners page at rvlifestyle.com but if you want a direct link just go to um, wholesalewarranties.com slash rvlifestyle wholesalewarranties.com slash rvlifestyle and they'll actually come back with a number of different quotes, different companies. They'll find out exactly what works best, how old your RV, where the best rates are. Uh, this exclusionary thing, uh, we had an interview with them a while ago and they explained that that's something that you want in, uh, in an RV extended warranty policy. So you know what is excluded, what's not uh, covered and what is. Um, so check them out, get a bunch of different quotes. So the answer is the same for both. Get a lot of quotes. I think that is such a good feature that yeah. what isn't covered, because you just think it's oh, covered. Oh my gosh. And uh, I think everything you buy, it should be very clear what's covered and what's not. And a, and a big way that RV dealers make their money these days is by selling you extra add-ons, uh, extra insurance, tire insurance, paint insurance. You know, and you are so excited. You've gone through, you've had the walkthrough of your vehicle you're ready to take it on the road and you're signing all this stuff and then they start saying now here's for this and this is extra and this is extra we'll just work, build this right into your payment and that's where things can get out of control so get as many prices as you can i don't like extended warranties like when you go to a store and you buy oh, an yep. electric appliance and $25 or something for two years. Yeah. And like you buy a washer and dryer, you've got to buy all these warranties. And that never happened we used before. To, we used to say, if we have to buy an extended warranty, we're not buying this product. Yeah, if, you, if we have to buy an extended warranty, you're telling me it's not going to last. Yeah. And, uh, um, but unfortunately, yep, yep, it things is. have changed. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, question, another question is, do I have to uh, turn off the propane when we're pulling our travel trailer from one campground to another? And the answer is no, you don't. Uh, we don't have to do that. There are some places where if you're going through a, a tunnel. tunnel, you have to turn it off. You're supposed to turn it off. Uh, you should not probably leave your propane on for extended periods of time when your RV is just sitting there or it's in storage. But just traveling about on a trip, you can leave your propane on. Um, the reason you can is because, for example, many many of us have refrigerators, at least more newer RVs, the refrigerator works off of LP or propane. And you want your refrigerator to stay cold while you're driving, so, um, so keep it on. Uh, you're okay to do that. Some people say, you and, and gas stations say, well, you should turn it off when you get gas because of static electricity. Um, that's a decision you can make. It's very easy to turn it off, you know, so when you get, when you get fuel. Uh, but not when you drive from uh, place to place. All right, one more we question. We got a question from Misty, and it says, Our RV came with a spare tire. If it came with a jack also, where might that be located? <laughs> if I needed to get one, what's the most economical way to do that? I can tell right away that Misty's got a towable. And uh, many of the people say, see that line, hey, we got a spare tire. And you automatically think you got a jack with it. But you don't. Most trailers and towables do not ship with the jack. And in fact, if you look at the manuals for them, they urge you not to try and change it yourself. They say uh, you should actually uh, find a company that does truck tires, you know, that does for when trucks break down on the, on the highways, have them do it. They say it's not really safe for uh, inexperienced people to deal with tires that size, the air pressure that's so high on, on uh, RVs. So um, they don't have a jack for you. Many RVers will carry a jack. They'll go to like Harbor Freight and they'll get something, you know, like um, uh, they, uh, they're called uh, bottle jacks, a hydraulic uh, bottle jack. But, you know, they got to go in a certain place in the RV. It's not like a car where there's a lot of easy spots on the frame. So that's why we have uh, good SAM insurance or we have road service with, uh, with our RVs. Uh, we'll call them and they'll come and we have a, 
a tire, a spare tire that they can then put on for us instead of having to bring a tire. I think that speaks volumes that you shouldn't try to do it yourself, that they don't give you a jack. You've got the tire, <laughs> which is a good thing to have because that's the tire you need to put on your rig, but have a professional do it because most people probably don't have those skills. And and I, another reason they don't bring the jacks because they they're trying to save weight, you know, because well, RVs are, I are very overloaded. Great. I was giving them yeah. the benefit of the doubt that they were trying to save us. <laughs> it's probably, that's a problem, but I, I'll give them, maybe it's both. Maybe it's safety and weight, but whatever it is. All right, those are our questions. We love to get your questions, and you can send us them by just going to our private email, which is Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We love to hear your comments and your questions, and we'll share some of that feedback in our next episode. Till then, happy trails. <laughs>